Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody had uh, a good training session. As you can imagine, uh, a day before uh, the CPI, you weren't going to get this uh, rock star, you know, lights out, uh, you know, crazy nutty day ex of expansion. Uh, you could just see the cues on the, you know, kind of an intraday basis here. This is obviously a fake print. Uh, but you can see on the intraday basis, right from the open, it literally went sideways, uh, trading within, you know, a dollar, a dollar and change range. And as you can imagine, uh, majority of the stocks uh, did exactly the same thing. If you look at the scoreboard today, nothing really stands out. You got the Dow up a little less than 100. You have the S&P 500 literally flat. Uh, and you have the NASDAQ down uh, 52 points. But if you look at the big macro picture, and this is kind of kind of we're going to segue into tomorrow's session, you can see here how tight the channel has been uh, for the last four days. And these are the numbers uh, going into tomorrow that's going to be very, very significant and, 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 and really, really viable uh, to kind of create uh, a trading uh, plan in case the number goes one way or another. Uh, last uh, CPI came in at 6%. Uh, the readings or the forecast uh, for this one is around 5.1, 5.2%. Who the hell even knows what that means? I'm not smart enough to understand it. I'm sure there's 30,000 other 18-year-olds uh, on social media who will more than gladly explain it to you. I couldn't care less. It's just all about price action. Most important thing that I do know is what happens if the top of the channel gets validated, if the bottom of the channel gets validated, and price action should uh, come after. Again, it's pointless to sit there with a fine-tooth cone to try to dissect every single word, every single, uh, every single uh, data point that comes out. Uh, with these readings, whether it's food, energy, God knows, poodles, right? Whatever is in, involved with this, the most important part is how does the market react and how does your process take advantage of that reaction? And kind of this is where we go uh, into tomorrow's session. As you can see here, again, four days in a row, right? That's the one thing we kept on reiterating yesterday. I said the one thing I always do is play devil's advocate. I like the way the market rallied yesterday. I like the way the groups shook off bad news yesterday. Uh, what I didn't like yesterday going to today's session was the fact that we put in three days worth of lower highs into the five-day moving average. Today was day four. Does that mean something? Does it mean nothing? Maybe the market is just kind of uh, buying time for tomorrow. I'm going to take that as face value as uh, the answer to this. So going into tomorrow, here's the numbers you should know, right? Uh, you have 319 to the upside. I think everybody's covered that number uh, for the last four days. That's what the bulls need, right? I don't care what this number comes in and what the conversation is after. The bulls, if they could reclaim 319 on the Qs to the upside, we should go higher. If the reading comes in in a way that the market rejects it, uh, the bottom channel here, right, it keeps on rejecting, it keeps on holding this bottom channel here at 313. If 313 comes into play, the first move is not going to be huge, right? I, I think if the if the downside starts getting confirmed, the first move will only get down to this 311 level. That's the rising support of the 20-day moving average. So I, I don't believe initially if the, if the reading comes in and the market doesn't like it, you're going to get a straight move 10 points uh, on the NASDAQ. It doesn't work that way. Stocks do trade from supply to supply, demand to demand. And if the reading comes in poorly, or at least poorly for the market reaction, the first move below 313 should get to about 311. If the market comes in well, right, the market is perceived well and everybody's happy, uh, 319 should start getting this thing into the 4-4 highs of 321.63. That's for uh, that's for the Nasdaq. For the spies, right? For the spies, uh, again, banks have done uh, an incredibly good job, kind of di deflecting uh, the bad news. We've been talking about that uh, for the last several weeks. Uh, you know, for the cues, uh, for the spies, a little bit different. You got the three uh, four twelve level, right to the upside. You have four twelve to the upside for a measure potential move to four fifteen. And to the downside here, yet three days in a row prior to today uh, that the bulls defended this uh, 405, 50s, 405, 70s level. If the spies start losing the 405, let's just call it the 405. I don't, I don't want to split hairs. 
If the spies start losing the 405s, then we go down to 303 and then testing the, you know, the 50-day moving average roughly back to that 402. So that's kind of what we have on, on the index side. I, I think it's our job, like every single day, uh, not to put in a bias, our opinion, our, our thoughts, uh, you know, our, our, our forecast. Our job is to be ready, right? Be ready on both sides of the market. Be ready on the long side. Be ready on the short side. So, for example, let me give you guys a couple of names that I'm watching for tomorrow. If the if the reading comes in bad, right? Look at Amazon, right? Amazon, uh, you know, had a not a great day today. You know, didn't have a great day today. Uh, it reclaimed back the 20-day moving average, but if it starts losing the bottom of this channel here, maybe this thing starts revisiting the 50-day moving average. You know, look at a trade. You know, look at a setup, for example, like uh, let me give you guys a couple of names. Uh, look at a setup, for example, like Microsoft. Microsoft went down today based on some AI news. First, they go up on AI, then they go down on AI. Who the hell knows, right? Who the hell knows? Who the hell cares? You can see here twice, it stopped at this bottom channel here. If it starts losing the bottom channel here, yeah, there's another three, four points of, of downside as well. To the upside, right? If the market starts waking up, look at a name like TTD, right? Beautiful, beautiful channel here. Nice, condensed, uh, tight channel setting up here. If it starts attacking the top of the channel here, Maybe this thing wakes up. Look at a name like VKTX. Again, not usually a name uh, that I would cover, but look at a name like VKTX. It's getting super, super tight. It's gotten rejected off the top of the channel now twice uh, in the last two weeks. This thing looks like it's ready to go. So your job for tomorrow is definitely be ready on both sides of the market. We know our levels to the upside on the ETF side. We know our levels to the downside on the ETF side. Now at 8, well, tomorrow at 8.30, we will get our answer. Uh, is the first move a fake out? Probably the first 78 moves are fake outs. Uh, you really need the market to open up to take some sort of death blows to the kidneys, a, you know, a shot to the temple, to, you know, to really take a couple of blows before they set up a trend. But again, once that trend is developed and it confirms on the 10 o'clock highs or 10 o'clock lows, depending which way the market's going to go, then we have our, a viable situation, especially if we uh, start attacking uh, macro levels. So that's it. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of... Uh, it's kind of pointless to sit here for 20 minutes to try to you know, decipher what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't know. We're going to know uh, when, when the data is released, 5.1, 5.2. That's the uh, consensus going into tomorrow. Uh, last month, again, we had about a 6%. I think it was six, the reading came in at 6%. So we kind of know where we are. Uh, so let's get, let's get into the pivots of today. Like I said, there wasn't a lot, right? There wasn't a lot. But the point is the ones that did go, they went right. We talked about uh, we talked about Marrow. Yeah, you know, let's let's start off from the bottom. TTD. I like. Uh, it got to the 62 level. It needs still needs to confirm. Q's obviously never got there. Nvidia gapped up into the 278 level and it went sh literally straight down from there. Uh, Amazon went straight down. There was literally nothing going on in, in beta uh, in the first hour or so. Uh, Alibaba needs to build. It never got there. It went straight down. Mara, we talked about last night. Remember, guys, we talked about last night, the old Bitcoin thing with Mara. Mara broke out yesterday on a huge volume above this 9, 10 level, had $11, $12 calls or 10 and a half, $11 calls coming in. And Mara went nuts. And here's the pivot here. Uh, 955 needs to build. It's gapping up after confirming that 9, 10 level yesterday. So here was 955 level, right? Here was Mara. It was tight pre-market sitting on the 955 level which was right over here. And then once it got above 955, just absolutely rocketed. Uh, went as high as the 1064. Congratulations for all you guys uh, who caught that. Um, Tesla, you know, nice little scalp on Tesla. 8640 needs to build. It went to like 89 and change. Uh, yeah, nice little pop. Nothing crazy. We, we knew ahead of time it wasn't going to be anything crazy because there's supply coming in here. So it took out the previous channel here of 86.40 and went right to the next supply zone and got rejected at 89 and change. Again, nice little cash flow. Again, Tesla, you know, Tesla is going to need a lot of work to get out of the supply. Um, you know, I, I think if tomorrow, this, this is one of those names, if tomorrow the reading comes in bad, I'll start looking at bottom side channels. Unless it really gaps up and reclaims the 50-day moving average, then we'll uh, obviously reassess, uh, reassess there. Uh, AMD just, just went straight down right off the word go. It went you know, pre-market highs like 9640s and went straight down. Uh, coin was a big, big move. Uh, 69 needs to build on coin. Uh, coin had a nice move. You know, Mara went crazy. Riot went crazy. Uh, coin took out this whole channel here at 69, went right to supply. 
uh, at 7250. It's really, really nice move there as well. I believe that is it, right? I believe that is it. Yeah, we were looking for a pivot potentially later uh, on a day on, on Tesla and never got this. That's it, guys. Uh, that is uh, the wrap up tomorrow is uh, the CPI. Again, don't sensationalize it. People are you know, already talking about, oh, tomorrow's a big day. Tomorrow's exactly the same day as everything else. There's just going to be a little bit more volatility and a little bit more aggression uh, and, you know, an hour before the open. Let the, you know, let the noise die out. Let the bodies get placed wherever they need to be buried. And then just like every day, you know, act like a professional, wait for the trend to develop, have your you know, game plan in hand and just wait patiently for confirmation. Guys, God bless everybody. Have a great day tomorrow and hopefully I'll see you guys tomorrow night. Take care.